Today's All About video is about Cocoist Gel Ip Full Coverage Extensions. I'm going to show you guys not only all about these, but how to use them. Hey guys, Liz from The Nail Hub here, and today I'm going to show you guys all about these full coverage extensions that you can use with the Cocoa system. These are really cool because they allow you to create extensions quickly and easily, and there are a lot of products like this on the market, but I'm going to talk to you about why I also love these particular ones. There are several shapes to choose from. This one is the long oval. There's also square in different lengths. This one's the square medium. And then there's also um, oval short. So this is oval long, this is oval short. And there's also now a new coffin and a new almond shape that's available as well. Um, these ones do differ from the typical ones on the market. So I'm gonna quickly just grab another one from a different brand. And I'll show you some of the, the differences and how they compare. So if you're not familiar with this product at all, if you've never seen these, um, they are intended to be full coverage extensions for creating a nail without having to sculpt. So you guys have seen me um, apply nail forms and sculpt nails on an actual nail form and then extend it. These allow you to do full coverage and this actually gets adhered to the nail plate and stays there and then therefore becomes the extension that you're putting onto the nail. So rather than having to sculpt gel on top um, and having to use nail forms, you can use this product to be able to do that all in one step. And I'm gonna go over basically how you do all of that and some of the pros and cons of these. Now you'll notice that the Cocoist ones are a little bit different than the typical ones you might see. So one of the main differences you'll notice, and I'll just zoom in so you guys can see really clearly, one of the main things that you'll notice about these is that the other ones that I've seen on the market, they're just clear and they're smooth on both sides. And so they actually usually teach you to file the underside of the tip in order to create a textured surface that the gel can stick to. Um, you'll also notice that this plastic has kind of a flat edge on the side of it. So they are a little bit thicker. I find that it makes it a little bit more difficult to get a flush application on the nail and so a lot of the tutorials show filing out the inside of the plastic to make it thinner um, and you'll notice that on the free edge it needs to be shaped a little bit as well so the Cocoist ones are a little bit different the Cocoist ones have already a pre-etched surface which you can't see once you put it on the nail I've got nothing on my nails right now so you guys get to see Liz uh, Natural but you can see that like you can see it there on my towel that that pre-etched surface but when I put it on the nail plate you literally cannot tell and the full extension is completely clear. So you're not gonna be able to see any of this etched surface. And then also once you put gel on it, you won't be able to see it either. Um, the shape of these is also a little bit different. So this is the oval long, which is basically the same as like a round nail. And you'll notice that the Cocoist ones are just slightly more tapered. I tend to like this type of shape a little bit more. I just find that it's a little bit more elongating. Um, and so these ones you can definitely, I mean, any of these you can file into the shape that you want, but the whole idea with these is that you're able to kind of one and done, right? You get them on the nail, they're the perfect shape, length, um, and there's literally almost zero skill required. You can create extensions very easily on the nail plate, okay? So they are kind of like, I don't, I'm probably dating myself saying this, but like they're kind of like Lee press on nails, um, but they're much more flexible and I do like them because even if you bend them a little bit, they don't get like that white crack down the center like you would ordinary tips. Um, and they're nice and thin all around the edges. So these are kind of all pre-thinned out. Nice and flexible as well. You can see they're very, very bendy and flexible. So they, they tend to fit really well on all different nail shapes because once you put it on, you can kind of form fit and kind of squeeze this full coverage extension onto the nail as you're doing it. Um, they do come in lots of different sizes. So let me zoom out real quick and show you. So they come with lots of different sizes and just like any type of nail tip, you're going to want to ensure that the tip fits from side to side. So 
when you are choosing the size that you're going to use, I usually like to start by sizing my nail tips. Even before I prep my nails, I usually size them first. So you're gonna to wanna to look like from side to side. So try and get like at least one side of your nail lined up here. And I also like to keep them a little bit further away from the cuticle area. I find that it's much easier to apply these types of nail tips if you don't put it right up next to your skin. Um, so I actually leave a little bit of space and then I fill that in as I'm doing the rest of my layers, like my base and my color coat, okay? So you want it to fit nicely from side to side. And sometimes you have to be like very careful about like, okay, does that fit? This one is a little bit small for my thumbs. I have pretty wide thumbs. Um, and my hands look like crap right now, sorry guys. I've been working on my house. I've got like little nicks and I haven't had nails on because I've been helping my mom. She's remodeling my laundry room. So I've had like nothing on my nails because what's the point? You're gonna snap them off doing housework. So um, you guys get to see Liz's natural nails with nothing on them. Okay, and so you go through and pick like the size that best fits. Now you can also pick a slightly larger tip if needed and file just the sidewalls, but you're gonna wanna make sure like this one's a pretty dang good fit, like from side to side. See how like my sidewall is nice and covered when I put this on there? So you wanna make sure that you're not having like a bunch of, like you don't want your tip to fit like this on the side of your nail. You want it to go all the way flush to the sidewall of your nail so that you get that nice sidewall on the sides. Um, and I do like that these ones are perfectly straight on the edges. So you can see like, just like when I do my extensions, they have a nice straight edge. Some of them, depending on the shape, are gonna be more curved. So just keep an eye on that. Um, and, uh, and you can also kind of adjust the apex and stuff as you go. So you're basically just gonna go through, choose all of your sizes. I usually line them up on my table like so. So once I know like which ones I'm gonna be using either on myself or on a client, I'll put them like in order of thumb, pointer, middle, ring, pinky, and I do that on the opposite side as well. So you would be able to figure out, you know, which, which size fits you best, okay? So I'm gonna work on my pointer finger because that's the easiest one for me to do on camera. Actually, I guess I could do middle. I've got a little bit of like paint or something on here. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys on my middle finger and you guys can actually see, I wanted to point this out. So my nails, you'll be able to see like there's no ridges on the, this part of my nail and that's because my nails have been growing out. So you'll see like natural ridges and texture on the brand new regrowth of my nails. And then you can see where I used to have product on my nails. And that's pretty typical. Anytime you take your nails off, you are gonna see some kind of mark. Now you definitely shouldn't have rings of fire where it's bright red. Um, but I mean, ultimately if you're doing your nails, you're gonna end up taking off a little bit of that natural texture, those natural ridges. So don't, don't freak out if you do see a little bit of that texture missing. Um, and the more you do your nails like me, since I'm constantly doing tutorials, I'm constantly like removing and applying things, which is not what I recommend for all of you. My nails are going to take more of a beating than someone who's just getting them done every two to three weeks. So, um, that's just something to know. I wanted, since I have nothing on my nails, I wanted to be able to show you guys what that looks like. Okay. So I am going to do my pointer finger and I might need to adjust my brightness just a touch. This light above me might be a teeny bit too bright to show you guys this. Okay, so I'm going to size my tip, make sure that it goes from sidewall to sidewall. This one might be a touch too big. This is a number two. They all have numbers right here on the inside. Um, so I am going to maybe go one size smaller for this. So this is a number three. And that looks pretty dang good to me. Okay, so first step, I've got my tip here, my size already ready to go. Um, next, what I need to do is I need to prep my nail before I apply the gel lip. So you can use literally any type of nail file and or at least a 100, 180 grit buffer. Um, the idea is you wanna prep your nails just like I've shown you guys in a lot of my videos. You can use your e-file, you can use diamond bits for this. You just wanna gently remove the natural shine and then I'm also gonna push back my cuticle. So I'm gonna use this Cocoist Buffer 100, 180 grit. You don't wanna go crazy with it. I find that this gel and these gel lips actually adhere very, very easily. So you don't need to go crazy with 
with that and I'll pull out my my cuticle pusher here so I'm just gonna gently push back my cuticle and you can do it like this too if that's easier for you so just gently push back the skin I'm not using any cuticle remover and I'm just gonna do this by hand this time because I've shown you guys a lot of e-file tutorials on my channel so I'm just gonna gently do this by hand and actually let me zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing okay so the goal here is that I want to remove that, see this white crusty stuff on the nail plate? That's the actual cuticle, which is just dead material that grows out onto your nail plate. So I just want to gently remove that. I'm just gently pushing back and trying to get that all off and pushing back the skin. And I'm just going to show you like the most basic way to do this because we can go crazy with all kinds of e-file manicuring, etc. But... I don't have that much cuticle on here, and um, I'm just going to gently remove the shine. So you can see, like, my nail is slightly shiny from all the natural oils that have gotten on it. So I'm just going to gently, and I had already washed my hands before this video, so I'm not going to sanitize before. Okay. The nice thing about buffers, too, is that they kind of help you clean the skin, clean off that cuticle as you're prepping your nail plate. I find that my skin comes off pretty easily if I just lightly buff it. And I like to do different directions with buffers because I want ultimately to have some texture on the nail plate. Can you guys see that? Okay. And now let me push this back just a teeny bit more and just make sure I've got all of that dead cuticle off of my nail plate. I'm not going to worry too much about cuticles in this video because I just want to show you guys how these gel lips work. Okay. So I've got my nail plate nice and prepped. You can see it looks a little scratchy, but I'm not making like any major dents or anything in my nail plate. I'm gonna cleanse my nail plate and get rid of all of the dust. And for this, I use my gel cleanser that I've talked to you guys about where it's a mix of mainly ice purple alcohol and a little bit of acetone in it. And I'm just gonna scrub my nail really, really nicely and make sure that all of that stuff is cleaned off, okay? So that did a pretty good job of cleaning up my nail plate. Now make sure that you allow your nail plate to fully dry. You can see right here, it's drying on camera. It goes back to that kind of dry, scratchy look. And make sure it also does it in the sidewalls too. A lot of times you'll have a little bit more moisture in the sidewall. So make sure you give your nails a chance to completely dry out after you cleanse them. And that way you're not gonna be trapping any kind of moisture inside of your application. To apply the gel lips, you can use one of two products. Um, and I have tested it with some other ones, but for the sake of just keeping this true to what the manufacturer wants you to use, I'm just going to show you guys these. So this is Platinum Bond Duo by Cocoist. What it is, is it's a kind of a mixture between their previous Platinum Bond, which looks like this. I'm sorry, my, my jar is ugly. Um, so this is the Platinum Bond Clear 2. This is their base coat. And then they also have an Excel Builder which is like a builder gel. So these products, it's the same, one's in a pot, one's in a bottle, Platinum Bond Duo and Platinum Bond Duo in a bottle, depending on which, if you like working from a pot or a bottle, um, are kind of like a hybrid between these two products. So it is kind of nice, but it is a thinner consistency. So if you're working with mainly extensions, then you might want to go with the actual base and Excel builder, okay? So Platinum Bond Duo, um, like I said, it comes in a jar like this, which you can use like a gel brush if you like working with a pot and a brush. Um, but the nice thing is if you don't have any of that equipment, you can easily also use just the bonding duo in a bottle. So I am going to just, since I touched my natural nail without um, cleaning it, I'm just gonna clean the inside of my nail tip just to make sure that there's no bacteria or anything inside of this nail tip before I put it on. And the other thing I'm gonna do to protect my natural nail is I'm gonna put one thin coat of the base on my nail and cure it. And that way I know that I'm not gonna trap any air bubbles in my nail if like I if I don't do my gel it properly and I have like an air pocket. At least it's not an air pocket on my natural nail, it's just an air pocket between layers of gel, which is not as big of a deal. So I'm just gonna take a small amount of the bonding base duo. I don't typically use any bonders or anything. I find that this stuff adheres really, really well. So I'm just going to take a small amount and, again, scrub it into my nail plate on this first initial layer, making sure I'm on camera. 
And again, this is just kind of like your insurance layer so that if you do accidentally need to like pull up your gel up or you've got like a little air pocket or something, because these do take practice to do properly, this just allows you to completely protect your natural nail and get at least one solid base layer down before you put your gel ups on. So I'm gonna cure this and uh, and then the cure times for this are going to be 20 seconds in the cocoa lamp, 30 seconds in a regular LED or hybrid, and two minutes in a CFL. Okay, so once you have your base coat cured, now it's time to actually apply the gel lip. So the rule with these types of full coverage extensions, no matter what brand you're using, is don't use a ton of product because all that's gonna happen is it's gonna squish all over the outside. It's gonna like, once you press it onto your nail plate, it's gonna just go everywhere. So what I usually do is I just do like a nice wet layer on the inside of the nail tip. You wanna have a nice controlled amount because having all this gel squish all over your finger is not a good idea. And I'll talk about that when I do my pros, you know, my benefits and considerations on this product. But I'm just gonna show you guys how to apply this, okay? So all I'm doing is just putting like a very, very minimal amount of gel. And then what I do is I just take a teeny bit more and I put it right in the middle towards the towards the cuticle area because what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of push this down at a 45 degree angle just like I would um, like the opposite of a regular tip so what you're going to do is you're going to line up your um, your gel lip with your natural nail and you also want to have your nail lamp ready to go as well so um, I'm just going to use my Cocoist Infinity lamp I find that I don't need one of those portable lamps but you can absolutely use a beetle shaped lamp if you want. So if you have one of these little portable lamps, like the Cocoist beetle lamp, it's nice because you can use these over the nail um, quickly to kind of secure it before you put it in your lamp. But I actually find with the Platinum Bond Duo Gel that um, it actually doesn't lift off the nail very easily. So I've got my, my gel lip here, and what I'm gonna do is put the cuticle area down first. I don't put it right on the skin area. I kind of put it right in front because I like to have a little bit of space in case I want to e-file. And then all I'm gonna do is just gently press down until that gel kind of like secures the tip on my nail. Can you guys see that? Like that, okay? Now, what you wanna look for when you do this, I'm gonna do this again to show you one more time. You wanna look for air pockets. So like if your gel lip looks like this. Let me try and show you. Can you guys see that there's like air in there? So let me, let me kind of mess with this a little bit. If your gel lip looks kind of like that, where you can see air pockets in it, you don't want that. You want to have all the gel making contact with the nail plate and the tip all at the same time. And you want it to also come down just past the free edge of your nail. Okay, so let me wipe this off and do it one more time. And if you mess up, the nice thing is I've got gel on my nail already, so I can just cleanse this, pull downward so you don't get uncured product on your skin. Okay, make sure you're not wiping any of that uncured gel on there. Let it dry. And you can actually try again. So if you accidentally put too much product on your gel lip, don't fret. You know, you can always try again. You can also clean the gel lip if you need to. Get all of that out of there and start over, okay? And the idea is you don't want to have gel squishing around onto your skin or even down here onto the tip of your finger. You wanna make sure that you've got the tip nicely secured but without it squishing around, okay? So now I barely have any product on this tip and you'll see it's not gonna be enough. I've got some air pockets. Can you guys see that? And I wanted to show you this step by step because I feel like you know, there's a lot of tutorials that make this look really easy, um, but honestly, you do have to really practice in order to get this right, because otherwise you're gonna end up air pockets like that and that is not what you want. It means that the tip is not fully secured. You can also, if you want to, push into the skin as you do it, but I find that all that does, and you can see right there, it just gets gel up on my cuticle area. So make sure that you've got it perfect before you put it in the lamp. And again, you can try this as many times as you need to, just be very cautious about not touching the uncured product and not having it all over your skin. Okay. 
Okay, so I am going to put this here. Now see how I've got it nice and even, no air pockets, and if I hold it in place, it goes right past the free edge of my nail. That's exactly what you want. You're gonna flash cure that with either your regular nail lamp or you can do like with a little mini one like the beetle lamp, and then you're gonna secure that onto the finger. Okay, so hopefully when you're done, you're not gonna have any air pockets on your nail plate. You shouldn't have any air pockets up here either. And your nail should be straight. And if you do have any excess gel, sometimes it will squish out, like mine did a little bit right here. But you wanna try and get it where it's as even as possible and it's not like a big lump of product sitting on top of your finger. So if you do have a little bit that like is on the tip, that's okay. It's hard to do this on myself, but if I was doing this on another person, you can also with like a gel brush, like for example, I'll just grab one off my table. While the gel is still wet, if you want to, you can kind of push the gel out like this, flick it out. I did that a little bit over here where it was squishing out. So you can kind of press that out into the nail tip while it's still wet if you do have any of that excess gel that kind of squeezes out. But ultimately the most important part is gonna be right in here, you wanna make sure that there is no air pocket on your natural nail because out here is not as big of a deal. You definitely don't wanna have uncured product on your finger. Um, but you also want to be very cognizant of like your cuticle area and make sure that there's no air pockets on your nail plate so that you get a secure hold on this. Now, this is the long oval. You can absolutely file this into shape and I usually recommend that you at least take off the little nib that's on the end of these nail tips. So I'm just going to turn this around so you guys can see. So there is a number underneath, which I can show you guys how to get rid of that if you want to. If you're going to put color on this, it really doesn't end up mattering. Um, and there's numbers pretty much on every brand of these that I've ever seen because that's how they come and that's how you can see what nail size you're using. They also file really easily. So I'm using the same exact buffer just to kind of line this up a little bit better with my nail shape and just make it a little bit more tapered. And then I usually do go through the entire surface of the tip before I put any product on it. I do go through and just chalk this out so that there's no shiny surface. Because if we're gonna put color on top of this or more gel, we wanna make sure it's um, it's got something to stick to. So you do wanna remove the shine from these after you're done. So it should pretty much look like that. Now, if you do have a little bit of a lip here that you're worried about, you can also take your e-file, I'm just gonna take a carbide bit that I've got handy. You can use a diamond bit, you can use a cone bit, you can use whatever you want, but I am just going to take off a little bit of this lip so it blends into my cuticle area just ever so slightly. And if you don't e-file, you can do this by hand. So I'm just gonna take off that little lip so it's nice and nice and flush to my nail, okay? Now you will notice that these are very, very thin and kind of a flat shape. There's not really a whole lot of apex to them. So you have a couple of options. Once you have this extension on, because really what the whole idea of these four is that you're able to get a quick extension on your fingers without having to do nail forms and without having to really know how to do extensions. So really the whole idea is this part, but it also does give you the full coverage on your nail so that instead of having like a regular tip that only comes to here, and then you've got to build product on top and still finish file, the whole idea with these full coverage ones is that you're able to get you know, everything from cuticle to free edge all in one step without having to know how to hand file to finish file this into making it look pretty, um, you know, for, for whatever you're trying to do. You can also add more product on top if you want to build more of an apex. And then once this is chalked out just like this, once it's matte, you can just go straight in with what other, whatever color that you want to put on it. So you can put gel polish on it. They are really nice and strong. Like, I mean, they are flexible. I mean, you'll notice that they have some give to them. Um, I usually do put more gel on before I put the, the color on, but you can absolutely put color right on top of this. Okay, so I will show you guys kind of using these more in future videos, but I at least wanted to get kind of this you know, initial benefits and considerations and how to use these and what they are type of video done. 
Um, so the benefits I see with these are creating length and shape is super fast and simple. So you guys saw like, really, it's just sizing the tip to your finger, prepping your nail, putting some gel on, putting the tip on, curing it, and you're pretty much done. Um, you can also take advantage of the fact that the Cocoist fold coverage extensions, the gel lips, are pre-etched, which means you can skip a step because the typical ones that are out there on the market, you have to file the underside of the tip, which is really hard to do if you don't have an e-file. So I find these to be more friendly for both people that e-file as well as don't e-file because they're pre-etched and they're a little bit thinner. So you don't have to worry about trying to kind of etch that plastic out before you apply them. The other benefit of these gel lips is that they're perfectly smooth surfaces to apply color and art on. So if you're struggling with extensions, especially for nail techs that, um, like for me, I like them when I'm trying to do my nails for a show really quick, or like I don't have a lot of time to spend, you know, doing a full set on myself, which can take a while. They're really nice for that. They're also really good for people who are starting out, who are struggling with all of the moving parts of sculpting with nail products. So you do instantly get like a nice, perfectly shaped, smooth, surface to be able to apply um, you know, your color and your art on. So that, that is a nice advantage of them. They can be soak off, soaked off and or they can be backfilled. So I have actually worn these gel lips um, last year for, I think I wore them for six to eight weeks and I did backfill them three or four times. So they do last really well. And when I backfill them, I just use the same bonding duo in a bottle or the bonding duo in a pot, whichever one you prefer, but you can just backfill them as if they were a full gel nail. It works really, really well. And then lastly, some of the benefits I initially noticed, I'm sure there's way more than this, but these are just the ones that I came up with. Um, they work really well as a base for any brand of color. So since we're talking about tips, um, then you don't have to worry about the product incompatibility issue that I've talked about on my channel before. Obviously, if you're gonna put other gel, like other builder gel on top of these, you do need to consider that. But if you're just going from gel lip straight into color, the nice thing is, is that once you buff that gel lip surface, you can use any brand of gel that you want because you're just applying it on an etched plastic surface. So any gel or acrylic or anything is going to adhere to that with no issues. Some of the things to consider about gel lips is that when you're doing shortcuts like these types of products that are kind of those one and done, quick fix products, I do find that the people who do these all the time or they do them as their like primary way of doing nails, they aren't as good at doing extensions. So it's like anything, right? I find that it's not like riding a bike with a lot of nail stuff. It's like, it takes a while for you to get back into being fast and good at it. So. I like these, I think they have a place in my repertoire, but I still would do extensions with nail forms myself because I can control everything better and um, and I don't wanna lose that skill set. I'm really good at doing extensions and so I'm not gonna be good as good at doing gel lips. But for those quick scenario situations where I just wanna get some nails on, these are great, but I just want to make you guys realize that at some point you're gonna to have to learn how to do extensions if you really wanna be a master of your craft. So don't think you're gonna be able to do a whole nail career with these things and that's the only you know way you're ever gonna do nails. I find that these are kind of a additive service. They make things easier and faster, but you still need to know how to do all the fundamental things in order to um, you know be a well-rounded nail technician, okay? So I just wanted to put that out there because I do think these are kind of training wheel products and you know, if you always ride your bike with training wheels, you're never going to learn how to ride without them. Okay. Um, thin and don't offer a lot of apex or C curve. So as you guys saw, you know, there isn't a lot of shape to these. They're just a basic kind of shape with a natural type of C curve. Um, so for example, like from the side again, you know, there's not a lot of apex here. They're very thin. Um, and we're only putting a little bit of gel on the nail to support them. And then like down the barrel, I'm sorry, my hands and nails are so ugly. Oh my gosh, terrible. Um, down the barrel, the C curve is not super defined either. So they're just kind of like a natural shape. All of them are pretty similar, um, including like, you know, the other one that I was showing you guys earlier. They just don't have a lot of curvature to them. There are some ones that are like um, more curved. You know, you can get into like all these different shapes. 
But at that point, it starts kind of getting into the realm of like, why aren't I just sculpting nails? Like if, if, if I'm trying to be fast and quick with things, then I'm going to sacrifice something, right? So in this scenario, I think the two biggest things I notice I'm sacrificing is the ability to build a nice apex and also um, I'm losing that C curve. Okay. Um, the other considerations I have for you guys is it does require some practice to get this right. So the first time I ever used these, like I would consider myself very good at doing gel nail extensions the old school way with nail forms. But the first time I used any type of full coverage extension and especially the gel lips, um, it took me some practice. So you're going to have to practice with these before you use them because it's very it's very kind of, you have to learn how to make sure you've got the right pressure on the nail that you're putting, you know, you're kind of holding it in the right place that you're not getting air pockets that you're not getting gel squished all over the place. So it does take a little bit of practice to get the right amount of gel um, and all of those things going before you're able to do these, I would say quickly and efficiently. So they aren't exactly like straight out of the gate, you're going to be able to do them without any type of uh, practice. And then also the other thing that I wanted to highlight about this is that the way that these systems work where you're putting gel on the underside of a nail tip and you're using the gel to adhere the nail tip to the nail, there is the risk that gel can come into contact with the skin, just like anything. Same thing with nail forms, same thing with any nail product that we've got out there. There's always that risk that if we're not doing it properly, we're going to get gel all over the place. And that's really something that we want to stay away from. So... Be very cognizant of the amount of gel that you're putting on these tips before you apply them. Make sure you don't have gel squishing out all over the sides and underneath. Um, keep it off the skin as much as humanly possible. And again, if you aren't an e-filer, you're going to find it more difficult to fix those mistakes with a hand file than if you had an e-file and you could just go around with a bit like I showed you taking off that little lip of plastic. I don't know about you, but I think it is kind of nice to be able to quickly make nails with just, I mean, a couple of steps, I do think that these are really nice. And, um, and I do like the fact that they come in lots of different shapes. So just to show you guys before we kind of close out here, here's what the square ones look like. And I'll actually, let me grab, let me grab one of each of the seam so you guys can see how they compare. So this is the square medium. I've got the long ovals. I've also got short ovals here. And I apologize, I don't have the new almond or the new coffin shape, but just to kind of show you how these three compare. Let me get you a nice clean surface to see these on. Okay, so here are the three different lengths and shapes that I have. So This is going to be your long oval that I just used. This is the medium square and this is the short oval. So you can see like if I put this up on my thumb, you can see that it really doesn't create as much length. And it also really depends on your nail bed length. Um, I have kind of nice nail beds, but I don't have super long ones. So if you have super long nail beds, these might be, I mean, even shorter than that when you put them on your nail. So if you like just the kind of a shorter extension, these are really good for that. They can easily be filed and shaped if you want them to be, you know, a little bit shorter or a little bit more tapered. Like the square kind of comes as a tapered square, which I like. I like slightly tapered because by the time you put your two coats of color on it and your top coat, it ends up looking like a perfect square. Um, but it's, you know, you can absolutely adapt these as needed. And then I do really like the long oval shape. And as soon as I get the almond and the um, coffin in, I will show you guys that as well. Like I said, these aren't the only full coverage extensions on the market. You've probably seen several other brands that have products like this, but this is the first time I've ever seen ones where they have the pre-etched underneath side. So that skips a step right there. Um, I do really like the shape of these ovals. They are a little bit more tapered than some of the other ones I've seen on the market. So here's another one. You can see that it's just more of like a round shape. And then this is more of a tapered round. So I just... I kind of like the more tapered look. Um, and I think overall, these are a great product. I mean, does it solve every problem under the sun? No, you're still going to have to learn how to do real nails. And that's why I've been giving you guys all the gel nail fundamentals. But if you're looking for a quick way to put some nails on yourself or others, and just to be able to focus on other things like nail art, 
whatever. I mean, these are pretty dang good, as I like to say. Some of you guys have also started quoting me on the pretty dang good thing. I really do think these are pretty dang good. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see how they go. I'm going to use them more in some upcoming tutorials, but at least, like I said, wanted to get this video done for you so you could see them in action, see how to use them, and, uh, and kind of understand all of the different things about how you apply these and what can happen if you don't do it properly. I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about Coquist full coverage gel lip extensions. See you guys later. Bye.